Hi, this is Paula's desk. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, what are the five best reasons to become a Christian. Uh, many times people think that, you know, what's in it for me? What's this big deal about becoming a Christian? Yeah, you have to go to church on Sunday and you have to be good, but what, what is that all about? What are the advantages of becoming a Christian? And so I wanted to talk to you about that today. We all, um, you know, we get up in the morning and we think about what am I going to wear today? What am I going to eat for breakfast today? What am I going to do today? So we really are uh, me-oriented. A lot of people say this is the me generation that, that's coming up now. We, we're all the me generation. We all, in our brains, we process, why is it good for me? So, I want to tell you why I think it's great for you to become a Christian. And I'm going to use uh, the 23rd Psalm. I really like it. I, I pray it every day nearly. Uh, a lot of times you hear it at a funeral, but it, to me, it, it doesn't have a whole lot to do with death. <clears throat> but anyway... The, the first verse in Psalm uh, 23, 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all I need. So the first reason to become a Christian is the Lord provides for you. Uh, we, as Christians, we are blessed so that we can bless other people. Uh, the streets of heaven are lined with gold. And once you become a Christian, you leave, it's called the earth curse system, and it happened when Adam, Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, and they uh, decided, you know, they were thought the devil's plan was better. So uh, until Jesus came, we were under the earth curse system. And so... Being a Christian, it means that you've asked Jesus to come into your heart, that you want to live for him. So we're part of the kingdom of God. We're part of a different system. Um, and God, in this system, God provides for us. It is so amazing. And as Christians, we're taught to be generous. And what is really neat, when we are generous, God blesses us. He, in Luke 6, 38, it says, Give and you will receive. Your gift will, re will, your gift will return to you full, in full press down, shaken together to make room for more running over and poured into your lap. So, uh, as Christians, we give, but God blesses us so much when we give. So, and we're to be like, uh, not a reservoir where we just, hold everything for ourselves, but as a river uh, where we help other people. Another thing that I think is really neat about becoming a Christian is that in Psalm 23, 2, it says, He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams, and He renews my strength. So God really does give us rest and peace. Uh, it you know this world is a crazy place you think about it if you really think about it of all the um, nuclear energy and nuclear bombs and everything that the world has produced that could just annihilate mankind but when you're a Christian you um, base your peace and your belief on God's promises in, in the Bible. So worry is really a, a way of life for, for many people and even some Christians, I will tell you. Uh, if, if Christians don't stay in God's word and say those promises over and over again, they can really become so worried and so stressed it hurts their health. But God will take care of us and provide for us, uh, and He is in control. Uh, and 
as Christians, we're not supposed to make the things of this world our priority. God does bless us, but that should not be our main priority. Um, so, uh, we need to renew our strength daily through reading God's Word and prayer. And we know that He is our provider, our healer, and our Savior. So, um, I love that there are 7,487 promises in the Bible. You know, just pick one or two of those every week and say them over and over again and claim those promises. Uh, in the, it, it says here, once you make Jesus the Lord of your life, all the promises of God in, in Him are yes and amen. And that is in the Bible, and I can't remember where, but I will look it up. Uh, Psalm 23.3 says, He guides me along the right paths, bringing honor to His name. So, as a Christian, God will guide you along the right path for your life. And I have seen this over and over again. Um, the church that I go to, the, the young people that uh, attend church and have asked Jesus to come to their life, and when they go to college, most of them have that solid foundation where, um, I, I will tell you, a lot of our colleges have very liberal uh, professors with very anti-Christian ideas. And so it just does my soul good to see uh, these young men and women that are so strong in their faith that um, can... Um, stay true to the Lord and and love Jesus no matter what and stand up for him uh, I if you haven't seen the movie God is not dead is a good movie and that it's kind of along that line and what is really neat uh, God knows the desires of each of our hearts and he knows our talents so he can take all of that and lead you into the career and the life he wants for you. So, um, and I have seen over and over again when people give their talents and their successes, use all of that for God, uh, he blesses them and increases them. I know this one girl, uh, basically she kind of taught herself to play the piano. She had a couple of lessons, but um, went on to college and went into music. But she's a gifted musician today and she started out very young playing in church and giving her talent to the Lord so uh, and I've just seen that over and over again um, another thing is that Christians know that God's with them in bad times you know we live in a fallen world um, there's a lot of sin and evil uh, more and more every day but as a member of God's family, God will protect you and help you get through it. And he'll be with you and bless you in difficult times. He can even use a problem for your good. Um, when I was young, I got rheumatoid arthritis. And um, God has healed me of that through guiding me on how to eat, what to do, the lifestyle I lead, and he has used that problem uh, to help me help other people. I've written a book, and so God can help you. Um, God said in Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. What a promise that is. And Psalm 23 says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me, your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. So think of the most scary thing that you've been through and just realize that God was with you. He's there. If you ask him to protect you, he'll protect you and he'll comfort you. Uh, excuse me. So God will always be close beside you. And... Uh, his rod and his staff will fight Satan and keep evil away. And like I said, there's a lot of evil in this world. 
Uh, another thing, when you become a Christian, you move from the earth curse system of toil and become a citizen of God's family, and I told you about that. God loves everyone, even non-Christians. He loves everyone. But if you've not asked Jesus to come into your life, you're still part of that earth curse system of toil and sweat and not, um, not a citizen of God's kingdom. So life on earth is short, but, you know, we want to be blessed while we're here. And we want to be part of that kingdom. We want to um, be able to help other people. Um, but eternity is forever. So where do you want to spend eternity? Now, according to the Bible, uh, those that ask Jesus to come in their heart and ask him, uh, say that you're going to live for him, ask him to forgive your sins, and you become a citizen of God's kingdom. And as Christians, we say you're saved. Um, once you accept Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Spirit comes in to guide you and direct you. Uh, so that's another great benefit of becoming a Christian. You have the Holy Spirit in your life. And I... I know as a Christian, I see things so much differently than people of this world do. And um, the Holy Spirit guides and directs you. And so, and it's, it's truth. Uh, the Bible is true. Um, th there's been lots of studies. There's nothing that contradicts in the Bible. There were over 42 writers and it all flows. It's all God's word. They were all inspired by God. The Bible is inspired by God. So, I wanted to read this last part of Psalm 23. It says, You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. How wonderful is that? So, uh, your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me. Isn't that wonderful? Do you want to be pursued by God's uh, unfailing love and goodness? Oh, boy, I do. And in, in biblical days, they anointed a person's head um, either for service or as a place of honor. Uh, so God, God can anoint you for his service uh, once you become a Christian. God, God offers us protection from Satan and his evil when it says you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. So those are five reasons <clears throat> excuse me, to become a Christian, and just ask Jesus to come into your life. Uh, read the Bible. Read it every day. Uh, it's, it's amazing to become a Christian. And I'm sorry to say, <clears throat> as Christians, we haven't always lived the way we should have. We haven't always um, claimed these promises of God and lived according to uh, kingdom living. But you can, and it's here for you, just for the asking. God's waiting for you, he loves you, and he can't wait for you to become a Christian. Thank you for watching, God bless you, and I just ask you, say your prayer today. Ask Jesus to come into your life. Thank you. Bye-bye.